I was called a nigger by one girl. I would never forget that day. I would never forget her name. I, that name has stuck with me. You know, I'm 33 years old and I still remember it like it was yesterday. The first time I, I became conscious or aware of racism, I was in kindergarten actually. I was five years old. First time, I was probably about, I want to say, seven, eight years old. Around first or second grade. I was 11 years old. My mother, on more than a few occasions, would gather us in the house and say, don't go out to the streets. Don't go out there. The clans are, are some people, they would say the white people out there, they're angry. And so we would be clustered into the house. We would look out the windows and say, uh, stay inside so no one get hurt. I experienced that many times as a young man growing up in the South. We went to a park. We met up with some other children who are obviously of a different race. And we were told that we were not allowed to play with these kids because of our color. The neighbor took it upon himself to come out. He stood over my father, telling him, you know, keep the noise on your side of the border. One of the things I remember most when I was five was my dad coming home with a rubber gorilla that had a noose around its neck that had been hung in his locker. My parents had to try to explain racism to a five-year-old. When I got off the bus, I had to walk like three blocks to get to our school. Well, that school was in a predominantly white neighborhood. So kids in that neighborhood um, immediately started calling me the N-word. It became a way of life. It was like, you know, that was the game we played every day. We all know that racism is alive and well, but um, me being a black man, I always felt like I had to try harder. You know, I feel like I had to tiptoe around in certain situations because of my skin color. Um, I have experienced racism majority of my life. It's kind of part of the norm. You know, things happen all the time that are reminders of cultural issues or racial issues or racial dynamics or you're reminded of people's bias on a consistent basis. So we had this experience where we went into Stoughton, we fished that day, so we walk in the bar and it's like everything's just stopped dead. I sat down, like I ordered a beer and started drinking. These two guys next to me turned to me and said, uh, Negroes are not allowed in this bar. I, I didn't do anything wrong. The only thing that I did wrong uh, is to be black and walk into a bar. I've had meetings with people and they were surprised that I own that business. And I can tell just by the reaction of people in the room that they weren't comfortable with me uh, on a few occasions. My coworker and I were, were working on a grant late. I turned around, locked the door. We're both walking out and the secure, the parking lot security person pulls up, and as they pull up, that person shines a spotlight on me. The person still kept the spotlight shining on me and kept following me to my car in their car while they were in their vehicle um, until I got in my car and pulled off and left. I actually brushed it off until my coworker brought it up in a meeting the next day about what had happened to us and how disgusted she was that somebody would do that to me. The day after Thanksgiving, I was shopping at a local department store here in the area. As many people were exiting the door, it was beeping. As I began to exit the store, I was stopped by a gentleman and said, excuse me, can you step over to the side? I would like to see your receipt. So I was, of course, compliant, and they apologized, wanted to compare every item from 10 to 15 items in my bag. Um, more of the story is um, they were probably watching the wrong person, but due to the color of my skin, this is something that happens daily in my world. I went to uh, my special friend's birthday party uh, at the bar. There was a guy passed by, obviously eardropping. He said, you all Asian Chinese is the one that bring Corona here. With all things going on in here, I am just step back. Um, how can we be better? Um, it's really simple. It's using your voice. It's challenging behaviors. People know when somebody says something biased or bigoted or racist or sexist. Um, we just have a tendency not to say anything. I think it's hard, harder being a black father nowadays. Um, 
society makes it, they don't make it easy. They look at black men and they think of thugs, gangsters, and I always try hard to be different. I wanted a different image for black men. With me, it's, it's more so being aware, not assuming because someone is speaking Spanish, um, they're talking about you or they're illegal. I would say a little bit educate yourself. And if you want to know, to get to know their culture, ask questions. This have to change first before there can be any other changes. Ideas have to change, mindsets have to change uh, before we see any positive change. If this never changes, there then we don't, don't expect changes. I'm thankful that I don't base my the opinion about white people or people in general from the kids who chased me when I got off the bus. I try not to formulate an opinion about a person um, and just get to know them. Accept that racism exists, accept that it impacts people every single day, and then open your mouth and do something about it.